Today I am going to talk about the immune system, how exactly this immune system works within our body and how exactly this system coordinates with other systems and then we will also talk about things like the components of immune system and the types of immune system. So at first initially I will try to explain immune system in the simplest way possible. So as you can see on the screen there is this picture of bank. This bank can be represented as our body. So it's like our body. And then the, uh, there is this person, this masked person who is trying to enter this bank, uh, whose intentions are there to rob this bank and he's advancing towards the bank and he's trying to enter that particular bank. So in our case that would be the pathogen. The pathogen tries to enter in the body and it tries to create problems within our body. Similarly this robber wants to create mayhem within this bank and the first hindrance, the first hindrance he is going to face is the wall. We are assuming that this bank is some kind of a central bank and it is heavily guarded and this particular bank has boundaries or the walls around itself and you can see that we can compare that particular thing with our biggest organ skin because skin in the case of pathogens skin is there to protect us against the pathogen and then if we see this particular thing suppose that somehow this robber managed to cross the first barrier and now he's about to enter the bank but there is only a single entry to the bank and bank only has a single door and that particular door also has different kind of protections like this metal detector or any other kind of metal detector and we know that in our case in the case of human beings if pathogen is trying to enter via the oral root or oral cavity or even the nasal cavity we also have certain different protections for that particular root like we have different glands we have different hair like projections known as cilia and then we also have a sticky substance by the name of mucus so all these things are protecting our nasal cavity or protecting our breathing passageway so that pathogens can't cross them we know that mucus and cilia they try to stop the pathogens they try to slow down the pathogen and they eventually try to trap the pathogen within themselves so you can judge why I compared these things, the metal detectors with the breathing passageway and some other glands. Now in the bank we also have different things like uh, the camera. Within the building of bank there are several cameras and if we specifically talk about the facade of the bank, the cameras are also installed there. So whenever this camera detects any suspicious activity it in turn triggers the alarm and uh, alarm in turn alerts the authorities. So quite similarly in our body there are many different things, many different cells like the T cells, B cells and some other WBCs as well. They are there to perform the same function and if I specifically talk about this gland or organ by the name of thymus it is located somewhere close to the heart and it is there to play a very vital role. T cells and B cells they are produced inside or in the bone marrow or by the bone marrow but if I specifically talk about T cells these particular cells are matured within this thymus so we can compare all these kind of cells that are there to detect and sound an alarm within our body with this camera and this alarm so next thing is when the authorities are alerted suppose the alarm has been sounded or um, there is the silent alarm or the normal alarm and it created a kind of panic and uh, the robber is now trying to create more problems for the hostages or within the bank he is trying to create mayhem but due to the alarm due to different things uh, or protective mechanism now different kind of persons will come and try to stop him like if we talk about the security guard he will try to approach him, he will try to stop him, he will try to neutralize him, right? So we can compare that particular person with the WBC that are present within our body. 
and it the alarm or the silent alarm will also alert our local department and the policemen also will also come and try to counter try to neutralize that particular person or the robber so we can compare that particular policeman with the phagocytes we know that within our body there are many different types of wbc some are there to engulf the infected cell or the pathogen but some are merely there to produce chemicals so that those particular chemicals can neutralize or kill pathogen so the security guard the special forces uh, the police department they're all trying to stop this robber the way pathogen is stopped by all different kinds of wbcs so i hope this story is helpful in getting the basic idea behind this immune system now let's move toward the next thing from this story we can infer many different things like we got the idea that this immune system is a protective system it is there to protect body from different pathogens whether they are virus bacteria or fungus fungi and within our body there is the defense mechanism which will try its best to counter or stop all the pathogens and if we talk about the next thing we know that there are many systems within our body that are confined to a single location for example there is this system respiratory system and some other system as well they are localized they are confined to single location but not the immune system immune system is everywhere it is there to protect every part of the body so it is not localized then comes the next thing we know that there are many route of entry for pathogens like they can enter our body via the food we eat through the air we take in through the wound cut or any skin damage if there is any skin damage or cut they can enter through that particular area within our body and the last point is quite important if we talk about the last point now this immune system has many roles but one of the most primary or important one is to distinguish between body's own cell or in other words we can call them the self cells or the self particles so the role of immune system is to distinguish or differentiate between this self cells from the non self particles or cells so if we talk about the self cell they are body own cell and if we talk about the non self particle or cells they are actually the foreign agents virus bacteria fungus that are trying to cause problem or cause diseases so this non self particles may also include some allergens so in our body there are some unique biomolecules some special biomolecules that are there to perform this role they are there to recognize the own cell the body own cell and they are there to distinguish between self cells from the non self particles or cells so we will also talk about them in the future or the coming lectures next we are moving towards the thing which is known as origin of wbcs and we will also talk about different types of wbcs now when i was telling you that particular story the bank and the robbery story i told you that there are many different kinds of wbcs now this particular portion of my lecture would cover the names of those particular wbcs as well as their quantity within our body in the form of percentage and uh, i will not talk about their function yet we will cover the function of wbcs in the coming lectures but right now i am just trying to familiarize you with the kinds of wbcs that are present within our body so if it specifically talk about the origin there is this stem cell by the name of hematopoietic stem cells now this particular stem cell give rise to every kind of every type or kind of wbcs and we start with that particular cell and then if we specifically talk about the leukocytes uh, or the wbcs we have many categories as you can see there are granulocytes there are a granulocytes and then we have this megakaryocytes and if we talk about megakaryocytes i won't be talking about uh, megakaryocytes a lot because when they disintegrate themselves when they are broken down into pieces or fragments those particular fragments are known as platelets and we know that platelets are there to heal the wound platelets has its role in clotting 
So my main focus would be on granulocytes and agranulocytes. And if I specifically talk about agranulocytes and granulocytes, as the name suggests, if WBCs have granules in them within their structure, then those particular WBCs are granulocytes. But if they don't really have the granules or the grains, the particles within their structure, they would be categorized as agranulocytes. So you can judge that the difference is pretty obvious. And if we further subdivide agranulocytes, we have lymphocytes as well as we have monocytes. And in the case of granulocytes, we have basophil, eosinophils. Sometimes it is also pronounced as eosinophil. And then we have the neutrophil. And we can also subdivide the monocytes and lymphocytes. If you look at the lymphocytes, it includes T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes and natural killer cells. Earlier I was talking about T cells. The T cells are actually T lymphocytes. Both names are acceptable. And then monocyte includes macrophages and dendritic cells. And in the next video, in the next part of this video, we will talk about two different systems of immune system. In that particular lecture, we will talk about dendritic cells a lot. Why? Because dendritic cells are there to link the two different kinds of immune systems within our body, the two different layers of defense mechanism within our body. And macrophages, as I was explaining something to you, uh, I took a name in the story, the bank robbery story, that was phagocytes. So it, it is actually a phagocyte. Macrophage is actually a phagocyte and it engulfs the infected cell that has been infected with any kind of pathogen and that is beyond saving. So that's why our macrophage or this particular WBC engulfs the infected cell. So I am not talking about the function in detail in that part of the video, but we will talk about uh, their function in detail in the coming videos. So let's now talk about the quantity or amount in the form of percentages. We know that there are five different WBCs, monocytes, then lymphocytes, then we have neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Now to memorize their quantity or which one is more abundant in our body as compared to the other, we have to take help uh, a particular line which is never let monkey eat banana so this n is for neutrophil and if we talk about its percentage within our body it's about 60 to 70 percent of the total wbcs and then this l is for lymphocytes and if i talk about this particular lymphocyte its abundance or its amount ranges from 20 to 30 percent within our body and then comes M. M is for monocyte and monocytes are one to six percent. And then the things are clear now that eosinophil or eosinophils are one to three percent. And out of the total quantity of the WBCs, WBC which is present in least amount is basophils, even less than one percent. So by this line, things are becoming quite easier and we can easily memorize and see that neutrophils are the most abundant WBCs within our body. And lastly, we can talk about T and B lymphocytes. I told you that dendritic cells connect the two systems, the two immune systems. One of the immune system is known as adoptive immune system, and these two cells are part of that adoptive immune system. We will talk about that in detail, but these two cells are also subdivided into further categories or we can say that it they also include some other cells if i talk specifically about the first one t lymphocytes to memorize what kind of things are included within t lymphocytes and what kind of substances or particles are included within b lymphocytes we have to again take help of another line which is help me catch some suppose that t lymphocyte is saying something to b lymphocyte that you should help me catch some pathogen. So help me catch some. And in reply, in response, B lymphocyte is saying my pleasure. So by utilizing or using this line, we can easily memorize different things that are included in the case of T lymphocyte as well as B lymphocyte. So help is for helper T cell. ME is for memory cell. C is for cytotoxic cell. 
S is for suppressor cell. And again, if you talk about B lymphocyte, M is for memory cell. And the last thing is P. P is for plasma cell. So you can judge by using that particular line, we can easily memorize all the things that are included within lymphocytes. So that was all about the first part of this video. I will try to cover the types of immunity in the coming part. Thank you for listening. I hope you have learned something new today.